What is going on, everyone? Bingo here. I'm with the Dual Factory for episode 42 of X2 Drop. This this literally just happened like two, two three hours ago, basically. And we got a new master rule f uh, for Yu-Gi-Oh! And we threw out our other topic and decided we were going to talk about this and then a little other things that got revealed with it. But this is just amazing. I love it. There's not one part of it that I, w I want to change. So, I mean, essentially all it is is the old extra deck mechanics, Synchro, Xyz, and Fusion can be summoned to the main monster zone without an arrow. And that changes deck building completely. And, and Joe, what were your initial thoughts on this? Because mine were just like, holy <laughs> fucking shit. I can play bad decks again. Summon Denko, do you have a response? Reveal Fusion. Yeah, it, Those like, are my initial thoughts. So, And my mindset has not changed for the past two hours. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I just can't get over it because all of these decks that we played for years that really never got the support they needed during Link Vrain's, uh the era... And they were just really difficult to play, and you had to do like awkward stuff, like play supplemental engines that didn't really mix well, or you, you just had to like p willingly play a strategy that was just like it didn't really function how it was designed. But now with this, like invoked uh, should all uh, synchro based decks like synchro spam are they, they're just a lot more reasonable to play. And on top of that, like for meta deck building, it allows for non link monsters to viably be played because they don't clog up your EMZ. So uh -huh. I know I know we in the chat we all lost our minds like going through decks and everything. But really, like look looking at the the way the meta is gonna go, like how do you think it's gonna develop? Do you think it is going to stay link focused because those cards are just so strong and they're just going to tech in other extra deck mechanics. Maybe you'll still see 15 extra decks uh, being links. What, what do you think is going to be the initial thing besides people messing around with stuff as far as like top tier play? So with the freedom now that you have with the extra deck mechanic and being able to summon monsters and stuff like that, you're still going to see link monsters be in the extra decks. Like for, we can't, like uh, we, you can't get rid of the fact that you still have cards like LP that's Lone Fire for Dragon Monsters, right? Orcus is still going to be a very viable deck because of the cards that you can play and stuff like that that make it. Like Galatea is broken, Dengers is broken. Like cards like like they're just good. Like Appaloosa is still a good card. Sorry, is still a good card. Um, what other generics? Like Boralode's a good one. Like Boral, like all these cards are still good, but a lot of decks now have a lot more freedom in terms of your deck building and combo. <sighs> combo is going to be insane i'm ex i'm excited i'm very excited yeah and but it oh, it could get out of hand too so that's one thing to keep in mind yeah and i i think because like obviously master rule four was a very restrictive mechanic um it it didn't really opt for any crazy craziness to break the game this is kind of peeling back the and giving the card pool uh, some more room to breathe so something stupid is going to come from it and it's probably unavoidable but i will take that hit because it makes the decks i enjoy playing like invoked or light sworn or burning abyss just so much easier to play that because decks like that if you have to invest into a link to just to open zones right off the bat that's a very bottlenecked point in your combo and it's very disruptible so uh being able to just normal summon alistair and make a mecha bub before you do anything else let's say you got a bunch of mech knights or you're playing uh should all like like a chaos mix it frees it gives you that ability to make some protection and still be able to link climb and do other extra deck mechanics if need be you know yeah, I will say one thing, and we haven't seen it in a while, because like a lot of the cards are missing for it and stuff like that, but in the event something new and stuff like comes out, I don't think extra linking is going to be as powerful as it originally was. 
I mean, right now it's not as powerful because like we're missing the cards that we're making it broken. But like now, like okay, your opponent extra linked you, but like it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like yeah, as as long as you're playing a, a strategy that you know it's relevant because like okay. like a deck like Orcus, uh, give, in, given its current state, assuming it doesn't get hit, which it will, just pretend for a minute. Uh, a deck like Orcus, I don't think can really play a secondary mechanic besides Lynx plus Dengirsu very effectively because they got Skeleton and Harp and uh, the fucking Nightmare whatever and they're, like they're not the same level uh, Bombard's a tuner but it's not it's not an extender it doesn't summon itself so like you'd have to invest into that to get a Synchro and you're locked into Dark Synchro so like yeah, you could do other things, but I think it's just a better strategy just to play basically as is yeah. um, with maybe a tech card here and there. But Right, but oh, go I, think, I think the the big thing is like you're saying, because like some of these decks don't really benefit from having that open extra deck. Like you're saying, Orcus, just, it just doesn't. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure well, someone will find something that can go with it that makes it pl- a lot more playable, but... Act, uh, like, thinking about it a little bit more, because I was just kind of talking, and we haven't talked about this before, being able to take your Galatea in the EMZ and make a Dingirsu in the main monster zone could be extremely relevant so that you don't have to get rid of that Dingirsu and, like, be able to, still be able to play. So, like, I, I'm not an Orcus player, but, like, I feel like that could be relevant in... Uh, you know, a longer tournament, but uh, go on. What are you saying? It's just one of the things, like, the big, like, the big benefactor series, like you were saying, like, rogue decks just got infinitely better. Just, if it, like, I'm thinking about it, like, so right now, the best version of Hero is, like, going second, right? And you make, the only, like, monsters you play are, like, Cross Crusader and stuff like that. Yeah. Because Cross Crusader is generically good in that deck, but now, um... I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure how the new master rule works. I don't know if you can have multiples of the same monster or same monster type. I should say, like, I can have two XYZs without having an EMZ or anything like that. Yeah. So the the master rule, it's just those monster or those card types can be summoned to the main monster. The main monster zone without yeah, a link zone. Okay. That's, that's just the rule. So that makes older versions of that deck mainly Toad Hero a viable strategy again. And if that's the case, I mean, now decks like that where they were just like a one trick pony where like they go second and murder you. Now they have two ways to play. And then you can say that for a lot of strategies, for example, Light Sworn, one that you were talking about, got infinitely better because of this, because there's a lot of monsters you couldn't play because of that master rule. Now being forced to <laughs> like you have not a whole able to make box me- of like, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say not having to make Minerva and then link it away and, and like hope you mill a wolf. And it, it just made it so awkward for that deck to play. Like it, it was unbearable. You know, you really, you either comboed off on an insane level or you fucking passed. And that's because yeah. your extra monster zone was, you, you couldn't clog it, and you didn't have enough resources to make Minerva, and you didn't get lucky enough to mill the wolf to make the Curious. It, it's just right. frustrating. But now, now, yeah, you have no limit to what you can actually make, and that opens up your extra deck for, like... Because one of the things, like, White Sworn had, like, a lot of... Ex- like, before the Master Rule and stuff like that, when you had, like, Grass and stuff like that, like, one of the benefits of playing those types of strategies... Is the le- the access to level eight synchros it can make turn one, and I mean you couldn't do that under Master Rule four, but the new Master Rule, the updated one, now you have access to all these big behemoth monsters that you can make without the extra steps of going this. You have these X Y rank fours because like rank four is like the best generic pool in Yu Gi Oh yeah. for cards, and like you have access to all those cards. Like it actually just makes the game insane. Yeah, the the issue with like synchros and Xyz was like. If you if you needed to make a Borload Savage Dragon or, or a rank eight or not a rank eight, a level eight synchro to influence the game, like an Ignister, right? Ignister is a good example. Mm-hmm. You and that clogged your 
extra monster zone, like you were kind of fucking shit out of luck because you could, you couldn't pendulum summon anything, and unless you had another extender and linked it to like a generic link too after you spun a card like it was just stuck there and you got no value because you had in order to continue your play you had to get rid of it so it's it's attack isn't on board for going for game and it was just really annoying exactly i will say there's there's a couple of cards that i can think of that just get way more value because of this uh and you already mentioned one it was bahamut shark like Ooh. a free toad for no reason because you can make a, a rank four with two two water monsters. I'm so excited to see boards and of dark all uh, shark and toad again. Ooh. On top of that, we got a card not that long ago that is very similar, but it didn't like you you couldn't really make it work because of Master Rule Four. It was that rank eight that can special summon a number Xyz monster from your extra deck, like, but it had to be Victory Dragon. or whatever it's called. Yeah, I, I forget the name, but like you could summon Harbinger for free, but it took up three extra deck slots because you had to equip or attach a material, like a number material from the grave or extra. It, it was something weird, but you couldn't get value out of it because you already you needed two zones to do that. Right. And you needed to make a rank eight after getting access to two zones, and it also had to be the last thing you did in your turn because of its own effect. So uh, that cards like that have just didn't have a lot of value because it's like a combo ender. But you had to like do all your stuff. Like I saw, it's all some play and like the earlier builds of uh, Thunder before people just realized that it wasn't good. But like now it's like actually viable. Like that's actually kind of that's actually kind of crazy. <clears throat> all right um so meta relevant right now we we striker striker gets almost no value out of this i mean yes they get that link two that comes out and yeah you could in theory like play a rank four in the main monster zone like detach rose trigger r- like roses effect i forget what it is special summon it and then like link it up into uh the link two, banish a card and then link down but like I, I don't think that's going to happen, to to be honest. Orcus, we already talked about. But Thunder Dragon, in its current state, this there, there's absolutely no chance Thunder Dragon is going to be like anything close to what it is now when this rule is relevant. Because I think the OCG says April 1st, but I don't know if it'll apply did Master Roll 4 apply at the same time, or did it wait till like, after Worlds? It was after Worlds. Yeah. So we'll probably get Bro. it in the early fall of next year, right? Bro. Like August. Once we get that, Thunder is going to be the biggest bully in the yard. I don't yeah. care what anyone Thunder says. Thunder will be dead by then. But just imagine if we had that right now. Not having to make, like, some summon summoner so that you have the... You could just go, like, fucking Colossus, 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 Titan... I could just make big boss monsters for free. For fucking uh, imagine, um, bro, I'd be the biggest bully in the yard. You couldn't beat it. It's insane. And the cards, anyway. cards that get infinitely better because of this are we were talking about a couple or other couple of them earlier. Jesus Christ, um, super polymerization. Super poly is broken. Like you 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 want that card to be the first card you play because it outs. Your opponent's bored. That's why you're playing it. Getting Starving Venom stuck in the extra monster zone, Protoplant, Dragos Pelio, or whatever the fuck Super Poly target you're playing. Getting that to clog your extra monster zone and then having to lose value on it by linking it off to do what your deck wants to do was stupid. Right? Like, yes, I know it's a free body and it's kind of like, it's kind of good in that sense, but you can't have the option of using that card to push for game. And that was just dumb. But now, now. Yeah, now you just summon Starving Venom, make his fucking... Doesn't Starving Venom, like, gain attack or something? I honestly forget because it never comes up. Yeah, it targets a monster, a level 5 or higher monster, I believe, and it gains attack or something. It's something along those yeah. lines. So it's anywhere of 3,000 plus for or 2500 plus for its attack that you have the option to use that to push for game 
And I'm then, actually I'm just kind of getting excited now that you mentioned the uh, starving event because it's level eight, isn't it? Because uh, yes. like you could su- yes, like theoretically like you could super poly, and now one of the cool things is like now that you're not restricted to the extra monster zone and stuff like that, you, you can take it with any other level eight like yeah like a rank eight and just you know combo yeah just do stuff and like there's so much more you can do now like your super poly targets don't have to be as restrictive like uh you could super poly into a mud dragon it's a level four and then any other level four in your hand you just have a rank four play right oh my god it's water you can use to make bahamut shark yeah i mean super po- sorry okay super poly into mud <laughs> dragon normal summon alistair alistair effect rank four detach alistair invocation like it it's so much value that you're not getting fucked over by the the game mechanic. Like, Link Summoning is cool. I very much enjoy Link Summoning. Right. But limiting the past 15 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! for the new shit was, was, never, was never that fun. Especially waiting right. for the right links to come out and waiting for, and hoping Konami releases a Satellar Knight Link Monster. It's just not... It, it's not just fun, casual Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, yes, you can always play top-tier Yu-Gi-Oh with the meta-relevant cards, but it's not always about that. Bro. New Master Rule, and I have Strat... God, I'm excited. I'm sorry. Uh, so another card that just gets insane value is Should All Fusion. Like, I understand the card is... It's pretty good if it resolves going second right now, but having Construct on board... Or whatever other fucking card you made, like I feel like it makes pure shit all just crazy compared to where it is right now. I don't think it's gonna be top tier, but being able to summon construct more than more than one fucking shit all monster is it just makes fucking sense. It's gonna be great because like you can just put multiple construct on board without having to do the extra steps now. And, like, you can still play cards like Boral Sword because, like, that card's insane in that type of deck. But, like, you don't need it to kill anymore, and it's, like, broken. It's broken. Okay. So what other cards do you think get just way better? Okay. Before you go, I want to go again because sure. shout out to Aaron. He's like, I'm just watching D-Barrier get bought out on TCG Player right now. And that is true because we don't know what's going to happen. I, now, it's it's December mm-hmm. 2019 right now. Would I be investing in that card for eight months from now? Probably not. I'll tell you what. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to say that there there could be a, a fusion deck, like a fusion-focused only deck that becomes the top-tier deck. We don't know what's going to come out, and we don't know – the future so dimensional barrier if you don't have it is a fucking good investment but the hype around it is just going to carry it and you'll probably want to get in a few months i said i don't know specifically card but i know a deck two decks off the top of my head that get significant power boost because of those what are those and it was decks that were meta relevant before zoo came out and you have metal foe because now you can make multiple mithrilium and, uh, oh, yeah. I totally you also that. have <laughs> ABC because now the best part about ABC was the rank fours you could make, especially the turn one play where Sukiyomi was insane because beforehand during Master Roll 4, you could make Sukiyomi, but you didn't have a way to get off the board because there's no true way to extend. Now you can just make Sukiyomi Buster and it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Was- and you like, on top of that, you have the utility of the link monsters that go with that like bro that's insane yeah that, that's what i was gonna say like yeah we're, we're not going back in time we still have access to the link mechanic so being able to utilize rank fours and summon buster in the extra or the main monster zone for free and do link stuff with the pieces as you do uh, and like maybe there's some insane combo where you use you use the first then, buster you summon to like make a rank like abc players are nuts they're just my per- crazy for still playing it. But. My personal favorite that gets a significant power boost and it might actually be able to do something now, DDD. I can yeah. actually do DDD combos. Here we go, everybody. Just like let, actual DDD combos. And I got the big new fusion monster in game. Ooh. Woo! Woo! 
I can do so much, and it's oh, it's so great. And I'm sorry. I'll stop. No, it's now. fine. You'll just you're just walk into Nibiru. It's fine. I'm cool with bruh. You act like I'm not. I can crystal wing on board within four summons. Don't test me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris. Uh, Bro, that deck is insane. Just, you can make. You can make absolutely. It's uh, Nibiru, doesn't it? Or no, is that on the field? No, nah, it's got to be crystal wing. Clear wing prevents targeting and stuff like that, okay. but like. But actually, no, it can negate the effect of a level, level five, five or higher or monster. Higher, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sh- oh, I can do so much in a turn. And the, okay, uh, another series of cards that gets better because of this the Wind Witch engine. That engine that, completely fucking died because no, of Master Roll. We can play the best version of Invoked. Oh, my. Uh, it, it's getting an industry. Like, I, I, I can't think of a wind deck besides your unity i mean i guess there bruh. still isn't one but bruh. bruh oh my god Yu Gi Oh's getting so good so good i'm so, i'm excited i'm sorry i got excited for a second okay i've said like five cards that get better what, what do you order some that you, you can oh uh, sh- shout out real quick yo send you still a bad deck don't listen to doug yeah <clears throat> uh. Obviously, the best deck in the game doesn't get affected by this, which is True Draco. I hate you. <laughs> okay, ignore ignoring that. Um, God, I'm I'm just trying to think. There, what are some cards that lose utility because of this? That I know you said lose utility? E- extra linking in general. Um, I, nightmares. What? Nightmares use a little bit of utility because there's just better cards to make in certain decks. Yeah, I th- more I generic mean, cards. I I think uh, cards like Tornado Dragon will see an uptick in play. Like Phoenix, Phoenix is a good card. That's a good one. Mega Fleet, Mega Fleet loses some steam here now. Oh yeah, but I I still feel like at the end of the turn, most decks are gonna have a Link Monster in the MZ. Oh for sure, you have Link Monsters in all of them, but I think generic Link Monsters are gonna see a little cut down. Like, for example, a lot of uh, combo decks, I play Psyframe, Lord Lambda, or, like, Beat Cop and stuff like that as a generic Link 2 to get stuff off the board work. Now it's just not necessary. But, like, I don't know. It's kind of being a weird spot because, like, you still want to incorporate, like, a lot of power cards. Like I was saying, like, Elpy's a perfect example. Like, that's a broken Link monster that's going to see play in any strategy that plays dragon-type monsters and yeah. stuff like that. Because, like, oh, that's just God. summon any dragon out of my deck for free, you know? So, like, that's so, that's still broken. So, with the guard dragons, it now gives you that option, like, to use them to make synchros and then, like, make a pisty and bring back something else and make another synchro, like, off to the side. Like, you can make a savage or what's another, like, level 8 synchro dragon a level eight synchro Stardust, Scrap Dragon, Scarlet Red Dragon, Arch Fiend. Like, there's yeah. a bunch of big power eights you can make now. Is Savage a hard ones per turn or is it a soft ones per turn? Are you talking about its negation effect? Yeah. I think it's a hard ones per turn. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, hold on. Continue your thought process there, but I'm pretty sure it's a. Uh... But I mean, like, just, I mean, you just have so many power cards you can make now. Like, it's actually insane. Yeah, be, just being able to use the other mechanics, it's just, it's unreal at this point because we're so used to Master Rule 4. Like, when when Zoo was the best deck after Master Rule 4 came out, like, we didn't even play Lynx and we just played a, it's not a worse version of Zoo, but you had to do some weird shit to play around just to make like double dried it and like it would just be it's so much easier now and that's because it was an exes focused deck um that you just didn't have the tools you needed now burning abyss is going to be another fun one i mentioned it earlier that you're not Dante. forced you're not forced Dante to make broken. that cherubini first like yeah you're still going to play that card but sometimes it's really not the best option to make it first no no shit you can make you can make double educated man's dante without going into a lake my bro that's insane all right so some decks that i'm definitely gonna play because of this is i mean my number one is invoked because i i think that got a huge power boost not being limited by the extra monster zone 
Um, oh, by far. That deck just got infinitely better. My, a casual deck that I'm going to enjoy is Satellar Knight. But what else? It's one of my personal favorite. You know, you know your boy's going to play Shadol. For yeah. sure. So Chidol, with, I'm going to play the Toad Heroes. With Heroes, uh, um, the super, like, you know how people used to, like, super poly whatever hero they summoned bruh, to, like, summon other fusions? That oh, like, that's, a, that's a card that gets really, really, especially with Sunriser coming out, Miracle Fusion. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry. I got now, excited. I, I do think Xyz and... Uh, Synchro, they get a huge boost from this, but Fusion, I think Fusion has a lot of tools available to like be not not abused, but it it was the hardest mechanic to make work because it took so much investment uh, from the extra deck. Obviously, Ritual takes the most, but being able to set up multiple Fusion monsters without having to worry it is pretty oh. good. If you think about Fusion, mo- f- not ri- but Ritual decks. They get a huge boost out of this. I can think of examples already. So Herald of Perfection is one deck because one of the best cards to go in it because they the Ben 10 and stuff made them searchable was Star Seraph. So, I mean, your rank fours that take three XYZ materials, that just got infinitely better because now you can do so much without having to actually make Link Monster, and that deck gets a little bit more scary, but, I mean, it's still Herald of Perfection. No one plays it. Um, oh, Necroz. always one that plays it. One, Necroz actually does get a boost from this. Uh, one of those reasons being is now like one of the best parts about the deck was the generic rank fours it could make without having to have the extra monster zone being taken up. Now, obviously, you're still going to play cards like Pot of Extravagance and stuff like that, but I mean, it's not outside of the realm of possibility now where you can make like a Diamond Dire Wolf clear, search something, f- force a dweller on the turn, and then you know, like make another utility rank four and so like it's just. Small nuances like that, like people don't realize, like, but that actually, there's a lot of like thought that goes in that deck building process at that point, and it's just something you now have option to. Now, I'm not saying it's the most practical, but it's something you have now. Yeah, G- given the player base, I- I'm really excited to see what decks become tier two after this become competitively viable, and I want to know what the best decks are. Uh, small shout out. I can play TGs again. TG, TG stun, get out of here. <laughs> um, we were talking about at Ignister a little bit. I still don't know what that deck does, and I really don't feel like learning because it's Christmas coming up. But it plays every summoning mechanic, and I was wondering how that deck would function effectively under Master Rule 4, but... All right, we're coming up on like a minute left. You got anything left to say? Uh, buy your cards now before it's too late. Yeah, just just start thinking. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of initial hype, so you can watch the market watch channels like, oh my God, this card's bought out for this reason. And just make a note of it, and when it goes down, just pick it up. Um, but yeah, there, there's going to be some cards that you're going to want to pick up. We just don't know what they all are yet if you don't have them. I think D barrier is going. If you don't have a place out of that, like, what are you doing? Generic XYZs, generic synchros, making it a comeback. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I'm super excited. But also, uh, Douglas French has no sauce. Oh, he doesn't. Hold up, I gotta hit the button. There it is. Nicolo, you have no sauce. No. Hey. So I, we didn't even mention that the main like show isn't even focused on like the standard tcg game so that's all right it's the anime at that point yeah if just real quick the the new season of anime is based off rush duels which is basically speed duels with different card design and like different different rules i hope that doesn't affect the tcg like the product release the support it gets but that is a topic for another day we have like 20 seconds left so guys if you did enjoy please check us out same time same place next week we're on just about every podcast supported service there is uh if you want to suggest a topic twitter and youtube youtube.com slash bingo hd and youtube.com slash the dual factory 
comment on there and we will probably talk about it because like I say every week, other than when big stuff happens like this, we just sit down five minutes before and say, what do you want to talk about with absolutely no planning? So if we find a topic we like four days out, the podcast will probably be a lot better. But with that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye.